Good morning, all. I'll try and get this done very quickly because I know we all really want to go and get coffee and morning C. Morning C. But I remember on my demo, I put like demo on it. Full disclosure, I forgot about that until like a couple of days ago. So to keep true of that, I don't know if anyone's really noticed, but we've got these lovely people over here doing sign language. So I would like to know, what is a sign language for good morning? So, sorry for the delay, guys. <laughs> So it's this, good, good. Yeah. and morning, morning. morning. You yep. So good, morning. Yep. And is this for clapping? Yeah. So let's try this for today. Instead of clapping, let's just do this. Yep. <laughs> and if I go too fast, or if I just go massively off topic, just do that as well. <laughs> It'll make it a lot easier for me. <laughs> but, Let's get actually to the talk. So, there we go. Hi, if you've not heard, I'm Tremaine. Like drink coffee. Pretty much I can't start my day without a coffee. If you see me without coffee, I'm normally very alone and very angry. Also love being outdoors. That's why Lovely put a photo of me on a rock. Once again, that is just me. It's like rarely went to a park, it's not actually hiking. Hiking just took a bit too much effort. Also, if you want to follow me, tpen9, on any social platform, that's my username. So today, oh sorry, I probably should have skipped it before I did, but today I'm going to talk about five things I wish I knew back when I started to actually do development. It was quite a while ago, so there's a lot of stuff that I wish I knew. The main one is imposter syndrome. It is real, guys. Like, it's something that I didn't notice I had until I started attending WordPress meetups and actually talking to people in the community where like, I look at what I was doing and I never actually really knew that I thought that I didn't know what I was doing. For those that don't know what imposter syndrome is, here's the nice definition of it. The psychological pattern in which an individual doubts their accomplishments and has a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. That's it in a nutshell. I feel it's something that most of us have had in our early stages, even maybe in today, that we have all thought that we were an imposter and scared that somebody was gonna say, hey, you're not a real developer, or hey, you're doing this, and you're not really looking at, yeah. Like... But it's something I feel that we should, as a community, just embrace. Where even if we're a page builder, if we're doing a project, we're all developers in a way. We shouldn't be looking at it as one's a developer. Oh, this person's using this tech. That's not what I would use. This person's using this tech. Oh, I'm not going to use that tech. That person's not a developer. Where I think Google did actually had a campaign for it saying like. Am I a real developer or something? If anyone remembers what the hashtag was, shout it out, as I just forgot about it, even I put it on my notes. But imposter syndrome is real. Number two, don't do cheap projects. They're not worth it. They're gonna cause you a lot more pain than they're actually worth doing. Especially when you're doing sites for under a thousand, it's gonna cause a lot more problems than it is actually good. I remember back when I started, I was in high school, so $300 seemed like a lot to me back then. But these days, that looking back at it destroyed me as I was doing work for like 20, 30 days and getting paid only a couple of hundred dollars for that work. Where now I'm looking at it and I'm getting paid for the same quality of work and the same level of time about two, three thousand dollars more an hour. Contracts. Need them, even for small day projects, have a contract. Have a piece of paper that actually says what time you're going to deliver it, what you're going to deliver with, 
and everything that you need to deliver to that client, even if it's just a simple piece of paper saying, I will deliver this website with this function, with this plugin, deliver at this time, and I'll host it on this platform. Having it all documented and signed has a really good open relationship with your client. So then you're not handing over the project and going to the client, coming back to you saying, hey, I thought I was gonna get this. Well, having a contract means that you can go back and say, well, no, we agreed on this terms and conditions, we agreed on this spec, we agreed upon this plugin. Last, well, second last one is a work-life balance. It is very important to actually have the ability to not just work and work and work and work and then sleep. Then the next morning you work, work, work and sleep. Which, let's be honest here, who has that form of lifestyle? We got a couple. I think some people are too scared to put their hands up. But it is something that I've looked back at, at only very recently and worked out that I have really no life other than work and other small commitments. Where it's something that I now look at as something that I want to have a lot more better achievement at and a lot more oomph in doing. Last one is, I want to have a lot of time for questions, which I don't know if I'll have, but we have to have the big, like, inspirational thing. So dream big. Don't limit yourself to what you can do right now. Limit yourself to what you can do next. No matter what you do, each project, have go into it increasing what you can do by 10%. So if you are building a website, what is the next step to take take you to the next level. What is the small, maybe like single extra 30 minutes can you add to that project that can improve you as a developer? And then do it. Even if it doesn't work and it doesn't actually go into the final product, you're gonna eventually just keep building yourself up to become the next level of developer or next achievement or, well sorry, I just hit the mic. Sorry audio tech guys. <laughs> But I just had to have that slide up. And I want to have some more time for questions so that I can actually have a better engagement of any questions or any feelings that anyone has in the crowd, anything they want to talk about, even just personal statements. That's open for anything. You talked about work-life balance. Yep. What do you think is a good work-life balance? Well, I like to limit myself about eight hours a day of work, and then I like to somewhat just switch off. So after the eight hours, even if it's I work in the day, oh, relax in the day, work in the night, I like to have the ability so that even though I'm a freelancer, I still have the ability to go home and fully switch off. Where if I know a lot of times back when I used to be just freelancer, I would go to work, go home, go to work, go home, and even when I'm at home, I'm either on my laptop replying to emails, or I'm finishing that project, or studying for the next project, where then you've just pretty much, like you turn off for a little bit, but you're only turning off by like 30 or so percent. So what I see is always having it so that you are actually working even though you're a freelancer. So you get that like office, like nine to five feeling, if that makes sense. And any other questions? I think it's great that you underscore needing a contract. Yep. Can you dig into that a little further? How do you actually manage that process of getting them to sign and what do you have in the contract? Because yep. I know that part's pretty difficult and sometimes they actually come back with their own contract or want to strike pieces of yours out. Yep, so pretty much it varies on what your project is, 
But I like to have a very uniform concept where my contracts start with a brief description of what the company is and what we actually do. And then pretty much I then just define what the project is, so like what platform, what's the website or what's the app, and pretty much define that. And then I actually go in and scope out the project. So I might have, for example, if it's a website, I might have these are the pages I'm gonna do, these are what's on, me. on those pages, I'm gonna be supplying the content, the images, you have to supply this or this, and then pretty much I then say it's gonna take me X amount of hours, it's this much per hour, and then pretty much I have it like as a blanket statement, I get two reviews, and then after that you've gotta pay for an hourly rate, and then I pretty much have a rule of thumb that you pretty much sign it when you do deposit, so that pretty much as soon as they receive it, most of the time, they sign it, where occasionally I've got a couple that sign it a couple of days after, but I've been pretty good, most of my clients are happy to sign it, and a lot of the routine ones just sign it by default. And I think there was a quick, yep, go on. Ah, oh, so there's a uh, second. Uh, firstly, thank you for your presentation. It was really, really helpful with the tips there. Going back to the imposter syndrome topic, yep. when you're going to do that next big thing, say something like a speaking presentation or a really big project, bigger than yep. anything you've done before, how do you practically deal with the imposter syndrome that can creep up in those circumstances? Yeah, so that's a very good question. It's something that I really do not know about until like a couple months ago. But pretty much the way I look at it now is, if I feel I can, like if I can feel I can do it, I do it. But if I know I can't do it, I can't do it. Which I'll explain a lot more. But that's pretty much the sums up what I'm about to say. But pretty much where I look fully at it is, like you've got those things where, like, if your invoice, like if you're sending a proposal to Apple, that is something that's a lot lower chance of doing. But if you're like going to a cafe meeting for client, a lot of that stuff I feel is just. You just have to go into it knowing that you are the best that you can be. Like, go into it knowing that, even though if you don't think it, just go into it thinking that you are the next level, like you are the top developer, and just embrace it. Like, don't think about it, and like, just do it in a way. It's like, propose that contract, propose that project, just go in and do it, and if it goes down, it goes down. Which is, if you ever want to learn how to face rejection, do door-to-door -door sales. It helps a lot. Like, we laugh, but who really answers the door and actually sizes that something up with that? Like, I did it for two weeks. That's how I learned how to face rejection. <laughs> but yeah, so pretty much just go for it and aim to be your best. And if they reject you, move on to the next one. We can take one more question. How about something at the very back? No? OK. Um, well, thank oh, there's you. one at the very, very back. Very, very. So I'm just wanting you guys to get some real exercise here. I feel like we've only been going up to like the fourth or fifth row, so. You quoted a figure of $1,000 as, uh, as, as the sort of the, the, the bottom limit as to the sort of projects you do. Yep. How did you come up with that figure? Well, pretty much I worked it out as what would I want to wake up? So if I knew I was working on something, how much would I want to wake up to do? So if it's a project that's $300, I know that's going to take me 15 minutes. So I'm not really going to go wake up and go, yeah, I'm in for this. I want to go and make this blog article today, or I want to add a photo to this web page, where if I do it at $1,000, a client's going to come up to me and say, OK, yep, I'm going to add this, this, this to it, just so that it makes it worth its while a bit more. As also, so that $1,000 is more of a limit on my hourly, so you can't just hire me for 15 minutes. You've got to hire me for an hour. If that answers your question. 
Well, those are some great and useful tips. Yeah. Um, and I can definitely second the, the whole getting a contract signed for absolutely everything you do. So that's, that's a key takeaway. Yeah. Um, so thank you very much, Tremaine. Please give him a warm thank you. Uh, I thought we were going to start.